Pat, I'm, I'm Armin Katane yes, from CBS News yes, in New York. Um, was Adrian Gilliam a suspect in this case, and if so, why was he eliminated? I, I think early on, when you, anytime you have an investigation like this, you look at many potential suspects, uh, he being one of them. I think it'd be uh, ridiculous not to look at him initially on, uh, as well as many other people connected to, uh, to the people involved. And, and he was one of the persons we looked at, yes. And why was he eliminated as a suspect? What was it that... Well, he was eliminated based on our investigation. Our investigation determined clearly that we were looking at a murder-suicide, not a double homicide made to look like a murder-suicide. It'd be very difficult to uh, emulate something like that if you didn't know what you were doing. Um, once we got to the crime scene, once we were able to establish that uh, we were looking at a potential murder-suicide, we were able to reconstruct the scene basically through ballistic science and trajectory of the, uh, of the rounds and whatnot. It was pretty clear to us that she was seated in a particular location when she fired the shot that killed herself and when she slid down on uh, Steve McNair's lap. All of that was consistent with the evidence. And nothing to suggest there was a third person in there who may have shot the two of them and then staged it to look like a, a double homicide. Did we think initially that it could be a double homicide? Certainly we did. But once we got into it, we were able to determine that's not what it was. It was actually a murder-suicide. Are there other persons who had interest in Miss Cassimi? Absolutely there was. Uh, persons that were maybe jealous? I mean, some of that is possible, of course. But nothing along the lines of going to go in there, kill the two people, and oh, by the way, let's make it look like a murder-suicide. Very difficult to do, and we don't believe that happened. As far as the science is concerned, you had no fingerprints on the gun, there's no gunshot residue on her hands, there is nothing literally that ties her to the murder weapon other than what you found at the crime scene. What was it at the crime scene that tipped it? Right, I would say uh, that's incorrect about no gunshot residue. Her left hand did reflect some uh, gunshot residue, uh, although there was not enough for con to conclusively say that. The TBI did uh, place an addendum in their report that specifically said there was gunshot residue on her left hand, which would... which Excuse me, would just for one second. The, originally, it was a verbal estimate by the TBI that there was right. gunshot residue on her left hand, but in the police summary, finally, that right. it was inconclusive that there was gunshot and, residue. And that's the language that they use, inconclusive. But if you speak with the forensic scientists who did the examination, they'll tell you that there was evidence of gunshot residue on Ms. Cassimi's left hand. How do you explain the relationship between Adrian Gilliam Jr. and Ms. C uh, Cassimi? I've changed very differently from <coughs> this happenstance casual relationship to 200 plus cell phone text right. messages. Right. 49 texts. Oh, I, 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 I get all that. Yeah, uh, nothing you're saying a, escapes me. I understand, I understand everything you're saying. But none of it has anything to do with the actual event that occurred. Was um, Mr. Gilliam trying to have a relationship with Mr. Kasimi? Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. But was he the one that went in there and killed the two and then made it look like a murder-suicide? No. You have to look at Ms. Kasimi's history. Her history clearly showed that she was a woman in distress. And when this occurred, she made a comment to Mr. McNair just two days prior that pretty soon I'll have all of you. And he didn't understand the significance of that statement. But we think it's pretty significant when you add that with everything else that she did. Her emotional uh, state during the time uh, shortly before her death. She was, in our opinion, clearly uh, spiraling out of control. But I have talked to at least a dozen people that put her emotional state Right. Exactly the opposite of that. <clears throat> I probably talked to a thousand people that have told me over the years that their loved one did not commit suicide. She, was, she or he was very happy. We spend more time arguing with family members who, who refuse to admit that their family member or loved one committed a suicide. They would much rather believe that their loved one was, was murdered rather than have to explain the suicide. Well, not just and, 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 and this I, is no different. I spoke to the, to the gentleman, Tony, right. who was her boss, right. who saw her that oh, Friday night at 10 o'clock, who said that... She wasn't upset, she wasn't angry, she wasn't out of control. In fact, she was exactly the opposite. Um, she was sad about the fact that her roommate had left, right. but that was it. It wasn't right. that she was angry or emotionally right. distraught or irrational. Right. And, and, and I get that. We've also spoke to witnesses who have told us the exact opposite. So, so as far as his cell phone records are concerned, right. he spoke to her at 12.02 a.m. Correct. For three minutes. Right. Were you able to determine the substance of that call? No, he was probably 18 miles away from the scene when he had that conversation. Uh, probably the same, I think he sent her a text message, 1.25 a.m. or somewhere in that range on July the 4th. In addition to follow-up text messages later in the day on the 4th, um, probably 1.30 or so, and then maybe later that night. And he was always, never in the downtown area, absolutely never in the downtown area, which would be typical if you're going to ping off a tower where the scene of the crime occurred. Closest he was, probably 15 miles away. At the time of the suspected murders, Correct. he was, are we still looking at 2 a.m. 
uh, in the morning? Right, approximately, yes. So at about 1.30 on this text message on July right. 4th, right. Um, according to the cell phone towers and right. the pings, he's uh, about 18 miles Right, he's away. in that's Laverne, right. Smyrna area. That's, that's where the area he was in, where he was pinging off of. Where he was basically most of that night. 